Well, hello and welcome to this edition of Sales Club, sponsored by 3D Pro Services. Hi, I'm your host, Wayne Dean. And on this session, we're going to talk about developing your prop value proposition. First, I want to make sure we talk about what it is not. The value proposition is not a description of all your services and passions, like in a bullet point. It's not specifically information about all your products and services, and it's not some catchy slogan. And as we're talking about slogans, slogans can be what we talk about. It's called the, the hook. It's the type of thing where you're, um, St. Dave Sandler and the Sandler system had a really good one, and that is uh, Sandler training, the power of training through reinforcement. That, that's called the hook. That's, that's one of the things that you would end like your 30-second commercial with, where a value proposition is kind of exclusive. It, it really highlights your competitive advantage and sets you apart from other people. And at the end, we're going to have a couple examples to show you after we go through some of these presentation slides. It's pain focus, meaning how will your product or service fix the customer's problem or improve their life? And what are the specific benefits your target audience will receive? And I want you to think of it kind of like this. I've put a picture up here of a four-legged stool. Think of a four-legged stool. And I want you to think about what is the, the leg number one is what is the product that you have or service? What does the product do, number two? And what problem does the product solve basically for your client? And then number four, is how would the client evaluate the product against the competition? And you are a huge part of that value proposition. Would that prospect, after having conversations with you, start thinking about, boy, this is the product, but there's a similar product, their similar product from a competitor does the same thing, and it solves the problem. But as I evaluate whether to spend more money with this other clump bank, boy, I like this person better. And at this time, I always do a bit of a training thinking about it this way. Have you ever spent more for a product or service over here because you liked and trusted the company, even though you could find it somewhere cheaper over here? And that goes to prove my point that people do not buy on price. People buy on value. At this moment, I'm wearing, not wearing the most expensive shirt, and I'm not wearing the cheapest shirt I could find. I found something of value in between that fit my needs. I always joke, um, and the most, this is an older reference lost on younger people, but um, if we bought on price, that salespeople tell me, oh, my, I lost because of price. If we really bought on price, then we'd all be driving Yugos, just the old car from Yugoslavia that gets you from point A to point B. We don't buy cars on price. We buy an overall value of what it is that solves our problem, solves our need. Like, for example, right now is, um, do you want a new car? Well, most of you say, well, yeah, I'd want one, but do you need one? I mean, right now you might sit there and say, no, I don't really need one. But if you went out to start your car and the engine was totally froze up, now you need a vehicle. So now you're looking for somebody who can solve your problem probably quickly, because if you need something to commute back and forth to work, you're not so serious about, I'm going to serious about taking two or three weeks to find something. You're going to work and trying to find a value in between right now. So Please get off this whole thought process about people buy on price. Now, I understand that all things being equal, if I can get the same product at the same price, at, and but at a lower, I'm going to buy the one that's lower, if for sure it is a commodity, that it is the exact same thing somewhere else. But as a salesperson, what you have to do is take into consideration is how much of this four-legged stool, how important is your leg? in that stool. And it's, it's hugely important. That's what we talk about with sales, people building rapport, bonding rapport, the French word for coming together. Because if you build that rapport with somebody, you become that third or fourth leg of that stool that's so important. So when we start thinking about building the value proposition, take into consideration the specific group and the customer you're trying to target. I get a kick out of people that when they go to networking events, I was one this morning at Chamber of Commerce networking event, and as people were giving out their 30-second commercials, there was a dozen people that said, anybody who, <laughs> you know, be more specific. And what I mean by that is when you're talking to somebody, and let's say it would sound like this, hey, think of a time maybe over the summer, 
where you were at a um, block party, uh, a, a barbecue for neighborhood people. Was there anybody at that block party who was a business owner that was struggling with trying to uh, make ends meet? Give people a specific thought process in their mind as to who it is that you're going after. And then that value, start thinking about the benefits versus the cost as perceived by the customer. And you know, I, I, I was asked yesterday to join a networking group and they wanted like $350 to $500 a month. And I started thinking, you know, show me why. I should spend that money. In my mind, it's just not an equal amount that, boy, if I spend $500, I'm going to get a $500 client. I actually think, and most people think about it this way, is times 10. If I'm going to spend $500, then I want to see that I'm going to get $5,000 in value in return. So think about how your customer sees and perceives your product. They don't always equate it to exactly the same dollar amount that you're either going to save them. They need to see a little bit more of the third, the offering and the service mix that you're selling. And then some type of proof, some type of substantiated credibility that they can believe your offering is there. And then the differentiating factor is, a, think about it this way. Again, we've, those of you who've been with me for a while, you've heard the line that different is better than better. You know, most people are out there trying to convince a client or a prospect why your product or service is better than the competition. And I think those of you that are professionals listening to this, you realize that doing that, when you start saying, I'm better than the competition, it sounds like you're trashing the competition and that doesn't play real well. So, and I know most of you, you try and avoid that. So instead of trying to compare yourself as far as why you might be better than somebody else, talk about what makes you different. And then, then how your offer can be delivered in a clear customer value. So keep this slide in mind as we go forward. And I want you to think about any business model, their business model revolves around building a quality product, having the time um, or service to be able to help that client and cost. There is no business model where you can be the best quality, best service, and the lowest cost. You'll be out of business. There's only two. You can you can have the best service and a very good cost, but maybe the quality isn't going to be there. Or you can have great quality, you know, maybe think about great service, but now the cost isn't going to be there. So I always look at this slide and I think about it as this way. It's Panera's. <laughs> you can only pick two. It's, it's, it's a pick two luncheon. There is no business model where you can have the best quality, best service, lowest cost. You'd be out of business in six months. So most companies build around good quality, right? And good service at an affordable cost, but they're not trying to be the low cost entry leader. So when you're having conversations with clients, kind of say that to them, say, hey, our business model is to be great quality, great service at a reasonable, affordable cost. But our business model was never to be the low price entry level, um, lowest cost in the marketplace. Does that fit with what, what you might be looking for? And if you lead with that, you'll get away from this price comparison where you always have to negotiate to try and get a, a price. Most times, if you're dealing business to business, ask that business owner you're trying to sell to, hey, when we talk about these three things, price, quality, service, Help me understand what's your business model. I doubt you'll find too many people say, oh, we're, our business model is be the lowest price. Cheap, cheap, cheap. That helps you then come in and say, you know what? Same thing here. We were never designed to be the lowest price. Um, we're reasonable priced, competitively priced. But if price is paramount, that's probably not part of our value proposition. There probably isn't a fit. If price is the, the sole determining factor, it seldom is, and then you can move on. But components of a strong value proposition that makes you different is basically thinking there, the difference between I want and I need. And what I mean by that is mama, mama used to have a saying, uh, it don't hurt to want. And where that came from was like when we're checking out at the grocery store and I'm going with mama and the impulse items were there at the checkout and mama, mama, I want this. I want that. And my mom would go, show me, show me, you know, why do you want that? And I go, well, I, I want it. I, and she says, well, don't hurt to want. 
And I go, well, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And well, show me where it hurts. And there's a difference between need and want. And that's what you have to have that conversation. Why does the client need your product or service compared to a competition? What do they lose by not going with you? What do they miss out that makes you different than everybody else? And again, always that substantiation of thinking about people buy from people they like and they trust, and they like and trust people like themselves. And too many salespeople do not spend enough time in that compartment talking about building that relationship with people. They just can't wait to get to the pitch. You know, start understanding who is this person? How do they process information? How can I best present my information in the best way that they would receive it? Don't be so anxious to jump into your pitch. Have conversations, not interrogations with people. And when you start thinking about your clients, they're going to look at it and they're saying, okay, what's this fair value line? When does it get to the point where, yes, it's excellent value or poor value? And we start having that conversation with somebody and you can ask them, hey, describe for me what could be a real problem if you, and I'm not saying you buy the product for me, but if you bought the product that you're searching Describe for me what could be really poor value to you. Would it be the delivery date? Would it be the quality? Would it be the something else? And let the client tell you where that line ends up being. Too many salespeople talk about the excellent value that their product or service offers and doesn't engage with the client and try and get that from the client where that fair value line is. I mean, the client might sit there and say, um, hey, I'm willing to pay a little bit more to get this, or I'm willing to go a little bit cheaper and understand I might take some risk on this level as far as the delivery. I'll pay a little bit more to get delivery by the end of the week, or I'll, I'm willing to pay less because I can push off delivery another 15 days. Have that conversation with the client to create that value in their mind. And again, look at, again, what are those things that are pain, pain relievers? What does your product do that relieves pain for them? List some of those products and service that is built around that value proposition. Describe how your product or services can create gains for your client because that's what they're going to do. I want you to think of like the scale of justice. They're going to weigh in the gains versus the pains versus what your job or product can do for them. And I think what happens, um, we, we tend to spend so much time pitching our product or service on benefits and features. We don't have a conversation with the prospect about the value to them and what they perceive as a value proposition. We try and convince a client of our own value propositions. Remember, it doesn't matter what you charge for your product or service. It matters what the client expects to pay. It doesn't matter what your product or service is quality or service wise. It matters again, what the client expects in return for the amount of money that they will invest in this product or service. So have that conversation. Let's get into a couple examples and I've put, pulled a couple together. So Uber, for example, their value proposition sounds like this. Tap to get the app to get a, a ride. Uber is the smartest way to get around. One tap and a car comes directly to you. Your driver knows exactly where to go. And payment is completely cashless. So when you think about it, their value proposition lists what the benefits are, what the client saves by working them. Now, their slogan is the smartest way to get around. But the value proposition is the ease of use. One tap, a car comes directly to you. Your driver knows exactly where to go because those use, you, that have used Uber know that you type it in there. And the payment is completely cashless. So that's their full value proposition right there. It's just not a catchy slogan. Let's put it that way. Um, there's nothing like an iPhone. This is from Apple. Every iPhone we've made, and we mean every single one, was built on the same belief that a phone should be more than a collection of features. That above all, a phone should be absolutely simple, beautiful, and magical to use. Again, Apple talks about, you know, what the value proposition is, although again, the, the tagline might be the experience is the product, but they've started to build a little bit more as far as what that value proposition is for the client. 
couple more examples. Uh, unbounce. Um, unbounce is really, they sit there and the, what you can say is from the company that specializes in conversion, conversion rate optimization, their value proposition is abundantly clear from the moment you arrive on their homepage on their website. It's namely the ability to build, publish, and test landing pages without IT support. You know, and again, for many small businesses and even larger companies, the perceived technical overhead of A-B testing is a major barrier to entry and even making their value proposition stand out and be particularly appealing. So when you think about what they're doing, build, publish, and AP testing landing pages without IT is what they're talking. Now, again, their slogan is AB testing without tech headaches. But again, talk about the value proposition that they offer. And when you start thinking about Slack, Slack's value proposition really focuses on credibility and productivity. The credibility, we're talking about the quantity and the productivity to the service. They're not sitting there the lowest where the cheapest, most inexpensive. Again, connect all your tools to use Slack and avoid all the constant switching between apps. That's a pain that they solve. Set up your integration so that you get all your notifications directly. You remember that service from support. So we talk about quality service is what they're building their message around. So I think that that helps give you a couple examples. If, if you look at your website, a lot of companies, they build their websites and their bullet points and the, instead of the narrative. And what I want you to think about your value proposition, the examples that we've used here, is I want you to think about a narrative that kind of talks about the pains. Go back to, if you forget everything, go back to that four-legged um, stool. What's the product? What does the product do? What problem would the solve it, product solve for the client? And then how would that, con that client evaluate your product against the competition. And the last one, Crazy Egg is like a pair of x-ray glasses that lets you see exactly what people are doing on your website. That really tells you right there what their value proposition is. And then you show you, like showing you where people are clicking and when they aren't, or how many people scroll down on your page and where most people stop, or where these people are coming from to begin with and who clicks on what the most. So again, their slogan is like a pair, uh, you know, like a pair of X-ray glasses, but they give three different points of what pain they solve, part of their value proposition. So the folks at Craigslist like, realize that not everyone who visits websites is is familiar with heat lamps or behavioral tracking. So they provide visitors with a real friendly, accessible overview of the features that really simplify what the product does. And if you scroll behind this overview, you get a real meat and potatoes view of what their value proposition is. So again, your value proposition is not necessarily a slogan, but it is a detail of what your product does and what problem it solves for the typical client. I hope that gives you an idea of some of the different things that you can do to build and create a value proposition for you. And make the value proposition part of your 30-second commercial. You know, when you do your 30-second commercial at a networking event, it should be start with your name, obviously, your company. Typically, we work with clients who have this problem, this problem, and this problem. And this is how we solve those problems. That should be your 30-second commercial. Remember, 30-second commercial isn't to tell a client everything you do in 30 seconds. It's to get that client to understand your value proposition. So afterward, they come up and say, hey, tell me more. So that value proposition needs to be refined, needs to be worked on, just not necessarily a quick little slogan or a bullet point, a listing of everything you do. Typically, people want to know who do you typically service and how do you help that person? Build your value proposition around that, and I hope it helps you in your selling. So again, this is Wayne Dean with 3D Pro Services. You can find me at 3D dot, 3D Pro, 3D, P-R-O, P-R-O-S, Pro dot, and then my last tag is services. And a lot of people get confused, but 3D Pro dot services is a website that you can go to. I'm sitting here in our ACA club that we just opened in Col in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, so you can also check us out as far as our business club at uh, acaclub.org, aca.club.org. So again, this is Wayne Dean, 
Thank you for joining us. Call me if you have any questions.